Let me share with you a document that I created for today's meeting. So basically, this is your assignment prompt uh, for the ethical proposal essay. Um, but it looks different, yes, because what I did is I threw in my definitions and stuff that I want to discuss with you right within the prompt. I want to first start with the definition of what is an ethical uh, issue or um, how do we write about ethical issues. Ethics are based on moral principles. These principles guide one in deciding right from wrong usually in terms of rights, responsibility, societal welfare, and fairness. Ethical questions and issues deal with finding an accurate and reliable solution to what might be right or wrong, or what might be harmful or useful. Ethics impose a reasonable obligation to refrain from harming or misleading anyone. Okay, we do not mislead anyone and our goal is to provide a solution that will benefit everyone. Ethics should not be based on emotions, religious or societal factors. Neither should ethics be about just following laws. All the most laws are based on ethical reasoning uh, or doing what the society consid considers right. Okay. So it's not that majority thinks this is right. No, it is about what is ethically correct, okay? Majority of people might be following the lead just because they want to fit in the norm, but no, I want to really discuss, I want to really understand the topic, and I really, really want to go into that depth underneath this issue uh, why is it hurting a certain group of people? Why is it hurting a certain piece of society? Or why is it hurting the earth? Or whatever your issue is, I want to look into it and I'm going to find the most just and reasonable solution to this issue that is going to uh, benefit majority, if not all. Ethical discussions should be based on reliable, logical reasoning. So what we discussed up here we're not going to get emotional. I might be emotional about a certain topic. Like, for example, I love animals. I can't get emotional about it and just say, oh, don't hurt animals because they're cute. They're this and that. No, I have to bring in my research, reasonable, logical uh, research, reasoning. Okay. Remember, we talked about ethos, logos, and pathos. Always, always, always base your argument in logic, in logos, okay? Ethos and pathos will follow, okay? Ethos will follow when you do your research and you bring in those reliable resources. Educate yourself about the issue. Read mul multiple sources. Read what the opposition has to say about the issue. That's one of the best ways to educate yourself. If you really want to understand an issue, go read the opposition. Okay, go see what the opposition has to say about the issue. The idea is to understand the issue. Idea is to really know what the problem is. Okay, also read uh, opposition to negate and concede, to refute and add a concession to our argumentation because uh, discussing uh, opposition, refuting opposition and conceding uh, actually makes your argument stronger, okay? But don't do it carefully. Don't let um, opposition overpower your argument and don't let opposition overrule your argument. That's, uh, don't let it take over um, your uh, point. That is use updated and timely information. That is very important. Sometimes when you're trying to kind of fool your uh, audience, you're just trying to bring in data that doesn't really relate to today, doesn't really relate to your time maybe, maybe your reg region, maybe your circumstances. So be very accurate as to what I'm presenting relates directly to now, to this issue, and not that 100 years ago this was an issue. So current issues, current data, current information.
Okay. In addition to presenting a most just solution to an issue, a writer has the obligation to be honest, provide the most just, most on, on information you can, tell the truth, Incorrect information can mislead your audience and direct them into making the wrong decision. Dishonesty is harmful. Do not fix irregularities so everything looks good. Irregularities in what? In the data you've collected, in the sources you've gathered. Don't try to fix those. Present the truth as is, okay? Uh, do not present only the data that supports your ideas. Okay, take into consideration both sides. Do not invent data completely. Provide unbiased information. Um, make sure your source provides complete and unbiased information. Be on the lookout for slanted bias, politically distorted work. Similarly, when you present the gathered data and information in your piece, present the complete and unbiased uh, information. As a writer, your goal should be to provide the most accurate facts coming from reliable sources. So look, if your author is uh, an expert in the field, is knowledgeable of uh, what they're talking about. So look for all those details. Present accurate and up-to-date information. Present a fair argument. Offer a balanced, reasoned argument, not selected or slanted. You are providing a solution here. So you are going to just try to figure out how this something that is hurting the society, that is hurting the world, how can we resolve this? That's why it's a proposal argument. In a proposal argument, you have to propose a solution to the given issue. Do not plagiarize, do not cheat, do not copy. So the essay assignment, it says that you're writing an OPED. So what is an OPED? OPED is a written expression of an individual's or group's view on an issue of public interest. Generally, OPEDs bring current local, national, or world events into viewpoint. Current, the keyword is current, okay? We cannot talk about what was happening 80 years ago, what was happening happening 50 years ago. We got to focus on our current events. I commonly offer a recommendation or solution to controversy or a problem. Okay, so basically, it is something that is current and it affects uh, the, the local, national, or world events. It discusses an issue and it recommends a solution uh, to the controversy or the problem. Um, an OPED usually calls for an action uh, on a neglected subject, or an OPED is usually a new or unexpected slant on a current issue. These are the topics I recommended, or these are the ideas I recommended. This is what you're not supposed to do. The length, now uh, count. Anywhere from 1,300 to 1,600 words, can you go under that? No, absolutely not. Points will be deducted. Can you go over that? Definitely you can, but not by a whole thousand words. Or if you're a bit over, like you've got 300 more words, that's okay. Okay, so try to stay within the uh, set boundaries. Everything else we've learned so far is still going to apply. Add attribution tags, add parenthetical citations. If you use APA style, don't just add a uh, cover page and call it APA style. No, then everything has to be in APA style, your in-text citations and your reference list. And if you're doing MLA, same thing, you're going to use MLA for everything, for your title block to your in-text citation and your works cited page, okay? Uh, you are required to use four sources for this paper, and most of you did at least cite four uh, sources in your work cited page on the rough draft. Now make sure you use those sources in your paper. Remember I've discussed about don't just list a source, actually use it in your paper. Uh, format, again, generally in your PED does not require in-text citations or works cited lists and it is written in a full block format. However, for this assignment, you will include in-text parenthetical citation and attribution tags and provide 
a works cited or reference list and you will format your essay in APA or MLA style. Provide a complete URL for each source you use. So this is where it does not remain an OPED anymore. Okay, the length is more than an OPED. The format has changed. You are required to add a visual. Visual is a must for this piece, okay? And the visual should be an expression of your argument, okay? From just looking at the visual, I should be able to tell, okay, this is what the argument is about. Uh, the visual should be placed on the top of the essay. Don't put it in the middle. Don't put it at the end. Right underneath your title, add the visual. So here's your title block. Here's your title. And right here will be your visual. You can center the visual. You can put it on the left. It looks better in the middle. So center the visual. Add your source citation followed right underneath, just like we did uh, with the other visuals that we use in our quantitative analysis essay and the graphics creation assignment. Same way, cite your source. This citation will be single spaced. Most use Arial font size 12. And uh, your visual should not take any more space than about a little under half a page, okay? Because remember, if you're gonna put a bigger visual, it's just gonna look bad. And it is not going to add to the length of your paper because no longer I'm asking I need a three page essay or a four page essay. It's a word count and the word count is actually going to start from the first word that you start the essay with. Okay, none of this source citation or um, the title block or the work cited or reference list are not going to be added into the word count. Source for the visual then will not be counted as one of the required four sources. Visual can come from an open source but that source will be not a part of the four required sources for this assignment. Steps that will help you write a good strong op-ed and I think I've already went over this. We have a clear controlling thesis statement, support everything with evidence, uh, use counter argument for repetition and concession, propose a solution to the problem, and this is always a must avoid wordiness and fluff, write an honest uh, argument and uh, support that argument with evidence. We're going to avoid using first and second person speech. We're going to write in third person. We're going to try to ex uh, draw examples or support from uh, uh, reliable uh, research. Okay, thank you. Okay.